So I got a great comment on a previous video, uh, Relativity 4, about length contraction. Uh, this comment comes from Kirsibu. Uh, he says, you nicely shrunk the box's sizes, thank you. Uh, but what about the contraction of their positions? And what Kirsibu is talking about in this example, uh, you see that the box is contracting whatever direction the ball is traveling, but they're remaining fixed. And, and the length that's being contracted is not just the length of the physical object, but the length in between the physical objects. So we need to be adjusting their positions as well. That is something that I omitted, but I'm gonna add it to the code now, right before your very eyes. So as a reminder up here, we have a uh, class for props found in the scenery. This is everything that's supposed to remain at rest, uh, but it won't really be at rest. It'll be having a contracted position. Um, we record its size vector here. That's what we were contracting before. Now we're going to keep track of its rest position vector and also contract the, uh, the, the, the position vector as well. Um, that's pretty straightforward to do. All we need to do is uh, take our length contraction here and just apply it to the props uh, positions as well. So we'll do a copy and a paste. There we go. And so all I need to do is change these sizes to position, POS, POS, POS. And I've got a little bit different naming here. So for the body, the observed position is going to be body.pos, but then the rest position is going to be p.posn. Um, and the reason for that distinction, if you come back up to the uh, prop class here, the position and the size are attached to the prop itself, but the position POS and the size SIZE -E, are attached to the box, the actual shape that is part of the prop. So that's under the name body here. So that's why uh, these attributes here go under p.body.size and p.body.pause. And these over here are just attached to p, the p.size and the p.position. And this will give me a nice uh, contraction of the position as well as the lengths. So you can see here when I'm moving in the y direction, their y uh, positions contract. So the y distance between them contracts. Um, I don't have any contraction observed in the x direction because they're located at x equals zero. And that gives me an inspiration for how to better observe this. Let's make an entire array of these boxes going around in this space. Uh, let's see, where did we create these props? Um, oh yeah, we created them over here. And so we'll just take these and copy and paste them, paste, paste, paste. And let's just adjust their X positions a little bit. Let's see, now these things have a size of one. So if I move them over, let's say two units in the X direction, that should give me plenty of space. We'll go two and negative two, four and negative four. Uh, oh, actually I need to be doing, excuse me, I need to be doing two and two. Then negative, oops, then negative two and negative two, then four and four, and then negative four and negative four, copy paste, negative, negative. All right, so I should have a row on the top and a row on the bottom now. Yes, I do. Oh, and there we go. That's a pretty cool looking animation there. Yeah, so you can see there, it, it's a little bit more exaggerated in the Y, uh, but you can see them also getting closer together in the X. It's kind of hard to tell because of the way their lengths are being contracted as well. It's kind of hard to observe these things simultaneously, but that is, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and I'm not satisfied with just those. I would like some additional boxes there, but I don't want to have to keep copying and pasting. So let's do this. Let's set up um, a couple of loops here. Let's say for X in range, let's go all the way from negative 10 to 10 in units of two, like we did before. And then let's also set up the Y. So for Y in range, I like the spacing of five units in the Y direction, I think. So let's go from negative 30 to 30 in units of five, except I don't really want one to go along zero necessarily. Uh, so let's just have it be, um, oh, oh, I know how to do this. Let's start this at five and go up to 30. And then here's what I'll do. I'm gonna keep two copies of this prop command here and we'll just have X and X and then we'll have Y, negative Y, there we go. And let's hit control two to run. Oh, there we go. 
Okay, yeah, now you can definitely see it. So this kind of gives you an idea of how the coordinate system itself is transforming. Um, let's make them all the same size. Uh, let's change this to a one. There we go. Now, there we go. Now they'll all be cubes in the rest frame. This kind of gives you an idea of the coordinate transformation itself because these are giving you um, an x-axis and a y-axis, or it's giving you points in an x-y plane. And this gives you an idea of how that plane is being contracted as this object moves around. So this gives you an idea of how space itself is being shaped. So uh, yeah, thank you so much. Um, sorry, I already forgot your name again. Thank you so much, uh, Kirsibu. This is a really cool illustration. I'm gonna have to use this in class sometime. Um, do I, I think I want to add one more layer to this. Let's add some things, let's add some components in the Z direction. Copy and paste for Z, not capital Z, Z in range. Uh, let's make it the same range as the X, negative 10 to 10 in units of five. And let's give these folks their Z component here. We'll do a control two. Oh, there you go, that's cool. There is the, wow, this needs to be made into a screensaver, y'all. Uh, let's take it out farther in the, let's do a couple things. Let's take it out farther in the X. So let's take it out to negative 30 to 30 in the X direction. And then let's make this sphere's initial position. Let's see, it's got an initial position. So it's stretched out on the X and traveling in the Y. Let's make it stretched out on the X and traveling in the Y and the Z. And then we should get contraction in all three dimensions. Oh, that is so cool. Oh man, thank you Kirsivu, that was such a great suggestion. I really like this animation. This is a wonderful addition. Um, if anybody knows how to turn a vPython code into a screensaver, I think we could bring screensavers back with a little relativity. That would be, that would be wonderful. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.